Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I would like just to enlarge the field of comments, not to make exactly a comment. Because I think that everybody is a specialist in his domain, so it's nice to say something extra. OK, I would like to pay attention very briefly to four points. The first one is the Bulgarian creative economy, because this is a quite new economic sector in Bulgaria, which is developing very fastly because of the usage of traditional knowledge. And then I would like to briefly discute the um, protection of software and databases because the development of creative economies relatively connected with software and databases industries in Bulgaria. And then I just want to give you a very good examples of already established and maintained uh, cultural heritage databases in Bulgaria. So in year 2007, uh, with the help and assistance of WIPO, we made a research which helped us to estimate the economic contribution of copyright-based industries in Bulgaria. The results of this uh, research shows us that the utilization of traditional knowledge as a new resource, economic resource, help very much to the national GDP to grow very fastly. How we use this traditional knowledge, of course, by their digitization. That was the main point. So during this research, we used several economic indexes to identify the creative economy in Bulgaria. Those indexes were GDP, added value, employment, and export and import of several creative services and goods. And as a result, also we identified all those copyright-based industries, which is publishing software and database industry. You can see it. So in the end, we just write, because we were sure that the, tra uh, the traditional knowledge are a very powerful economic resource, which help for the creative economy to grow. And that helps to the economy as well also to flourishing. And I can give you some examples about the research from uh, um, the observed period of 2003 to 2005. And I'll give you the information about the software and database industry, because this is the industry which is really related to the uh, growth of uh, creative economy. So um, the development of copyright and database industry was 93% for the period of 2003-2005. The creation of new software and databases, as well as web designs, grow up to 108%, which is too much. That takes or that gives 0.511% uh, from the GDP and 0.621% from added value, I mean the software and database industries. And also, the employment was 0.485%, which is too much. That was one of the fast developing industry in Bulgaria. And also because only of the digitization of traditional knowledge. So how do we protect traditional knowledge in my country? There are several approaches, of course, through the industrial property. I wouldn't discuss this. And of course, through copyright. The protection through copyright is given by the copyright law in Bulgaria, and there are several approaches. The first one, we consider that uh, some of traditional knowledge, mainly handicrafts, are regional works. So they receive direct protection as original works are handicrafts. But where is the problem? The problem is that the protection is over the pottery, for instance. The protection is not for the inputted, implemented TK in the protection of this pottery, who is the owner of, uh, of this right. There is no answer. So the only owner, owner of the handicrafts is the author. But this is not the same person which actually participate in the utilization of traditional knowledge for years. The other approach is the protection through derivative works. Mainly we apply this for folklore. But this indirect protection protects only the performer or the producer, not the TK itself. 
So we try to find another approach, and this is a sui generis approach, to protect the TK through protection of software and databases. Actually like this, when you protect TK like this, the consumer, uh, for the consumer it's not so easy to to be misled about the origin of TK. Because if we protect folk war like de derivative works, sometimes the consumer of traditional knowledge may rely the performer with the author of TK. So the national protection of software is also under the copyright and related rights law, which was amended in 1993. And the law considered the software as literary work and it's protected as literary work. It should be a result of creativity and it should be presented in of software code. The software code is protected as well. The intellectual property protection is given for the software itself and also for the software which is incorporated into the hardware. And the ideas and principles integrated in the interface, interface are not protectable. Almost in the same way, we have protection over the databases through copyright protection. But for databases, uh, the law provides additional protection, which is sui generis protection. The difference between them is, the copyright, the, is that the copyright protection is given to the author. So the author is the holder of the right. And the database from the copyright protection is protected as collective work which is combination of different non-protectable materials. Also, the intellectual property database protection is given for the manner of their compilation and not for the database themselves. And the holder of, of the copyright is the author. The sui generis protection of databases is something different because what is protected is the substantive is investment is not the creativity of the author. So the sui generis right is uh, separately applicable, but in a manner which do not contradict to the copyright. And the sui generis protected databases may second be secondary be used by the legal user. And the holder in this case of the database is the inventor. In relation with our cultural heritage database, there are several aspects rising, IP aspects rising for this cultural heritage database's protection. And uh, how we manage the rights in this case. Regarding the IP issues of cultural heritage digitization, appliable is the copyright protection of the created software and databases. Because uh, the the, the, the state actually is the investor and the state actually order or demand the creation of software and databases just for, for the purposes of digitization of cultural heritage. That's why usually the creator of software and databases is an employee. And uh, because the order is made on demand and the contract is on demand, that's why usually the employee don't have the right copyright or sui generis right over the created databases. Regarding the cultural heritage law, the national cultural heritage is in the public domain. There isn't any IP protection over the traditional elements implemented in the object. Thus, under intellectual property right are only the handicrafts and folklore performances if the author or the artist could be defined. You see the pictures, this is a traditional Bulgarian dance, which is intangible cultural heritage. Actually, this is a fair dance, which intangible cultural heritage is already digitized and it's in the UNESCO masterpiece database as well. This is the examples of our uh, cultural heritage databases. The first and the biggest one is named Alive Human Treasures. This is the digital register of Bulgarian intangible cultural heritage. It could be found on the website of Ministry of Culture. It's indicated below on the left. You can see it. It was established in 2000 and 2001. 
by the Institute of Folklore, which is part of the Bulgarian Academy of Science, with the participation of the Ministry of Culture and some community centers. Actually, the community centers are very famous in Bulgaria, exactly in the protection and preservation of uh, cultural heritage. So this digital register is a state means for recognition of elements of national cultural heritage in support their preservation and transmission generation to generations. The same database, national database, is on the website of UNESCO, is also on the left side below. Uh, so it's internationally accessible. The other database of cultural heritage is so-called Alive Human Treasures, but this is a national system for Bulgarian intangible cultural heritage, which is databases representing cultural heritage by its performances. That means that if you want to listen this UNESCO masterpiece, this is a special way of singing, and it's only, uh, these songs are singing only by this group, the name of uh, Bistritsa Granis. You should type, you should go to the web page and you should type not Bistritsa Granis, which is the name of the group, but you should type polyphony singing, which is the way of singing the song. So the national system of Bulgarian tangible cultural heritage um, is used just to identify a special elements in their carriers which could participate in the national representative list and if those elements win some position in this national um, uh, list, they could participate to become a part of the UNESCO masterpiece. So Bulgaria, we have already two UNESCO masterpieces. This is the fire dancing and you see the Bistitsa Granis. Another database, actually this is almost the last one, is uh, Bulgarian Ethnographic Treasure. This is experimental digital archive. Um, mainly this, the aim for its establishment is to popularize and preserve the ethnography of Bulgaria. It's an uh, online archive, uh, everybody can see it on the, the web page, actually. This is the web page, but the English version is still under construction. And the last archive is the Open Museum, which is permanent digital online ethnographic exposition. It is also still under construction. So I tried to present you very briefly the experience of Bulgaria in preservation of uh, intangible cultural heritage and also its protection and also the importance of traditional knowledge as economic resource for the economic growth, mainly creative economy. Thank you very much.